So welcome back friends. It's a very chilly Monday morning on the homestead. Believe it or not, we had an inch and a half of snow uh, this morning when we were up about 5.30 and it's now 9, 10, 10.30. It's all gone. So I thought we might go for a ride. So I want to talk about the KTM a little, or the Husqvarna a little bit for the three, about the 300. Um, I've had a chance to ride it. I've put 60, 60 miles on it. Uh, so I rode it a fair amount and uh, it's fast. It's, it's really uh, fast. Is it, would I say, scary? Um, yeah, you could say that at times. Uh, I have a couple concerns about it uh, in that um, I'm not intimidated by it. I'm not afraid of it. But coming off of four strokes, that power band hit is pretty hard. And what I'm concerned about is if I get, you know, being out of practice and not having ridden for over 10 years, uh, if I get into a bad situation where, you know, and I, and I get a handhold of throttle and that power band hits, um, I could get into trouble and get hurt. So I think I found a solution to maybe even this out a little bit until I can kind of get my, uh, my legs under me. This of course is the engine and right in here, right behind that little gold screw is the power valve and the power valve spring. Now, when you buy these bikes, they come with three of these. You notice that one is red, one is green, and one is yellow. They come pre-installed with the yellow one. And what this dictates, from what I understand, is how hard the power band hits. With a two-stroke engine, when you're coming off the idle, uh, it'll rev up and then it'll just hammer into a power zone. The old bikes were really bad about that. And so what, uh, what you can do is we can take the yellow spring out and replace it with the green one. This is for the old guys here right there, the green spring, which evens that out. The bike will still have lots of power, but it's it, what I've been told, it'll be a little bit more manageable. Now, if you're a sadist and you wanna ride a demon bike, then you can put the red one in there. Red stands for demon. Um, and I won't be using that one anytime soon. So let's pop this in. And then I've got a helmet cam and we'll, I'll take you out and we'll go for a ride and we'll see how it goes. This won't take long. It should just be a, just a, 90 second little deal there so <clears throat> I watched some videos on it and they said put the bike kind of over on its side because uh, the oil will leak out so we'll we'll put it over here so the bike came with a pretty good a little tool kit this is just a starting point I'll put together a much more comprehensive one but you've got your basic stuff right there and pliers and Little tools, you got our springs and needles and jets and those things that I don't really understand yet, which I'll have to learn. But here's the socket we need. Now, it's a good idea when you're working on anything like this as motorcycles, when you do your maintenance, do your maintenance all using your kit. And then you, that way you find out what you're missing and then you can start adding it in. How hard can it be, right? Now, thanks to YouTube. You, YouTube. You can learn to do with just about anything. I really, I really do appreciate everyone that takes the time um, to put tutorial videos up, whether it be this or a million different things. It helps us all in life so much. So this is under spring tension. I don't know how much, but we'll, we'll see. I'm really curious to see what that, uh, what the difference is going to be between the two. I finally had to break down, I ordered a torque wrench. I've never had, I haven't had one for you. I think I used to have one, I think it got stolen from me. I had a shop years ago that got broken into. All right, so that'll have, whoops, of course I dropped that. I have to clean that up. Okay, so if we pull this out, this is not the spring in question. The spring in question is inside there. And I can see that indeed it is yellow. So we'll pop that keeper off, right there. This is pretty simple. I think any shade tree should be able to handle this job right there. So there, there's the yellow one, and that probably just sits in there. Yep, it does. So let's put the, the old man spring on there. <laughs> funny, you know how it's funny how we change. You know, years, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have put the spring in there. No way. I would have I would have thought no, nope, that's that's not cool. I I got to I would have put the red one in, right? So there's a little tab in there you got to line up once that's in there. You'll know cuz it won't uh, it won't uh, rotate. Okay. Now we can put this back on. But uh, but now um, 
I've, I've, I've got some common sense and some perspective. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. If you want to, if you want to buy one of these fire-breathing dragons, uh, and you want to uh, uh, go run it with the yellow or the red spring, um, good for you, man. I have what, no problem with that whatsoever. But uh, um, I, I couldn't care less what anyone thinks. To be honest with you, I'm gonna. I want to set up a bike that I, I'm not intimidated by, that I'm comfortable with, and if it gets to the point where I feel like I need more power, which I can't even imagine. Um, then I will put the, uh, I can put the yellow spring back in there, right? But for now, this one is going to do. Okay, I think this is supposed to be seven foot pounds, and uh, I'll use my elbow ras ratchet wrench, or torque wrench, until I get mine in the mail. Okay, that would be pretty good. I'll double check that when it comes out. All right, there we go. I think we're ready to go for a ride. So if you don't already know this, dirt biking is, well, I'd say it's gear intensive. I thought I was going to get off cheap. That's what I told Mrs. W. I'm like, oh, I already have all my own, my old riding gear. I won't need to get anything, just a bike, right? <laughs> well, I, I started breaking out my own gear, or my old gear. And, uh, it, you know, it was uh, kind of, some of it was breaking down. And then I got to check it into helmets. And uh, even though my helmet hadn't been used that much, it was, um, you're supposed to replace your helmets every five years. They break down. And I thought, oh, that's manufacturing nonsense, right? Well, then I took my the whole liner apart and everything, and found out that it was all uh, <clears throat> it was all breaking down. And so, well, maybe there is some truth to that. So I upgraded the helmet, and then of course, you know, I I, I started wearing I wanted to wear a neck brace, and now that I wear a neck brace, none of my uh, chest protectors and all that stuff will work. Uh, so <laughs> basically, <laughs> starting all over again. But boy, helmet technology has come a long ways. In all sorts of helmets, there's um, there's this new standard. I think it's called, well, some people call it MIPS. I mean, I think uh, helmet manufacturers have their own. This is a mount, just a 3M sticky mount for a Sony, my old war horse there, Sony action camera. I'm going to just assume that we, you'll be able to see something as we go along here. This mount has a bit of a contour or concave in it that will, that will help. Uh, it kind of follows the use of the helmet uh, anyway th but these new helmets um have a suspension system in them that uh, if you were to catch the jaw piece and it were to turn the, the the inner liner that hugs your head how i understand it uh it doesn't rotate with the helmet there's there's some deflection there um and that's uh pretty revolutionary and i've got the same thing on my ski helmet right there okay so this is how i'm gonna we'll bring you along here and this this is a quick attach mount and this should mount on here to this guy. All right, let's see how that's gonna work. What's the chance of us losing our camera today? Okay, well, don't know if the angle's gonna be right. I had to, I'll have to kind of keep my head down a little bit. It might not work at all. We're probably just gonna look at the sky. I'm not gonna get too carried away with riding gear today since I'm gonna be primarily riding on fire roads and, and uh, nothing too gnarly. So I'll take my phone and uh, Put it in a plastic baggie here. Uh, I, so a lot of folks were asking why I don't wear motocross boots. I, I was wearing motocross boots. I always do. I wouldn't ride without them. They maybe look like sneakers, but they're not. They're they're old Alpine Star Tech 8, so they are motorcycle boots. One thing it's a new addition um, that uh, you may have seen race car drivers, and there's lots of people wearing these. Are the uh, the Leet neck braces or the Leet? This is an Alpine Star, but Leet is I think it's a French company that started it. And so what happens, and I'll also take a balaclava today, I think. I'll just throw that in my backpack. Uh, so I'll start with a, I've got knee braces, shin, shin guards. I'm not gonna wear the full on body armor, but I just wear a, like a, this is like a cheap Kirkland rain jacket, which I, that I really like. But this neck, these neck braces, they go on top right here. And the, the theory is, is they have, I mean, there's not a lot of tests out there, and some of the tests you have to be kind of careful have been produced by the manufacturers themselves. But the best information that I can get, I can glean, is that they reduce neck injury, um, I think it was almost 50%. There's some, some speculation out there. So, and how that works is, is like this. So when your helmet's on, this, this thing has to be fitted to you. It, it takes some time to kind of take it, get everything there. But once it's on, it's really comfortable and you don't even really notice it. I, I rode yesterday for an hour, I didn't notice it. You pull the string here and it comes out. 
and it latches together. It just rides there. So what it does is it distributes the weight from the helmet, right? So when the helmet, if the helmet were to go sideways, it limits that ability in taking the strain off of your neck um, and puts the, puts the pressure more on the collarbones and the chest area, which can handle it a lot better. Same way at the back, it won't allow you to extend beyond this point or on the front as well. So is it, uh, does it really work? I don't know, you know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, I see a lot of people wearing them and, and the guy that um, sold me my bike said that he believes that the fact that he was wearing one last year may have saved his life, uh, or at least a neck, neck injury. So um, I guess anything you can do to mitigate that is probably worth doing. Um, it's all, uh, I don't know. But I, I'm gonna wear one, so I'll take some extra warm clothes and then, uh, and then we'll go out and see what we can, see what we can find. All right, guys, I think we're ready to go. So in my pack, I'll throw some warm clothing, a, a silky saw in case I need to cut something across the trail or road, a couple of soylents and some water, basic tool kit, GPS. Because uh, remember, on a bike, they go so fast that in ten, 10 minutes, you can ride uh, what takes you over an hour or more to walk. So if you do break down, you're riding by yourself. Uh, just remember that, 50 miles. That's a long way to walk in, in motocross boots. So here we go and we are off. I uh, feel so fortunate to have uh, an area to be able to ride, well, pretty much an unlimited area to ride um, just out, just outside the house. There are, um, and I'm finding more and more all the time, I, I literally hundreds if not thousands of miles of um, old logging road. This is kind of a main road here, but uh, a little ways up, uh, I cut off to the right and I found a I wouldn't call it a single track, but there's no gravel on it. It was dirt, and it was absolutely wonderful. It was full of water bars, so uh, and they were just per these perfect rollers, these perfect jumps, and the soil was nice, and I went through this old growth forest, and it was just, it was really, really beautiful. I have ridden this bike um, every day since I've got it. Jack and I, he, Jack has joined me probably 75% of the time, and we have had just a ball, even though the conditions are not, not optimal and it's super muddy and it's been raining every day and it's and it's super it's slippery and uh it just doesn't matter it i have been um having so much fun with it i i've told mrs w this morning i, I said this is this bike is my my gym on wheels uh, i look forward to riding it um, i come back uh, with um uh, tired and sore uh, from all of the muscles that uh, i haven't used for so many years um, it gets my heart rate up uh, it's a it's really is a, a wonderful uh, way to get to, to to get fit without having to go to the gym for me it was kind of an unexpected uh, side effect of of the whole thing but uh, I've really uh, really enjoyed it so uh, what I'll do is I'll cut back to the right here uh, where I found a tree across the road um, and then um, D Jack and I have been putting a track around the homestead and I rode I think I rode the majority of it, and I'll I'll, um, I'll come back and give you a little commentary on that, and then we'll we'll put an end to it. So uh, let's cut cut back to the movie. I don't know why I didn't do this years ago. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of miles of old logging roads that are just a little bit more than like a dirt single track. Uh, that, that was just awesome. <laughs> Every uh, 100 feet or so there was a jump or a whoop. It was just perfect. And this is why I bring a saw. Sometimes, well this is winter time, but sometimes in the spring, if you're the first uh, bike through a trail, uh, there's a lot of dead and down. So I always carry a, a, a saw. I could get around this thing, but it would just be nice for next time to uh, not to have it in the way. This trail is going to be perfect for Jack. There's no gravel, there's no standing water, a little bit of snow, but that doesn't amount to much. Just perfect.
Man, that is fun. It's such a good workout too. Cardio, muscles, I'm so sore after riding for a couple days I can't really walk around, but getting out and moving is definitely helping. This is just gonna be amazing in the springtime. All right, we're off. That was really, really fun. What a workout. Man, this is like a gym on two wheels that's actually you enjoy doing rather than dreading. I, so I have to say that I, I'm a fan of the green sp spring. Um, I, I, I didn't, can't think of any time there that I didn't feel like uh, I had more power than I even wanted. So will I ever go to the yellow one? Yeah, maybe when I get more, uh, more accustomed to the bike, but um, I'm trying to spend a lot of time on it, hours on it just to, increase my fitness level as well as just become comfortable with the bike because I'm going to be riding with some pretty hard pipe hitting uh, type of uh, riders with a lot more experience than I am so I want to be fit and in shape and at least, at least not slow them down so yeah that was great. Alright we'll see you guys on the next video.